Hello, it's James here. It's part 13 of OpenDog, the open source dog robot, which is totally open source. I've put all the code and can to date in the link in the description. So that means you can commercialize it or modify it and commercialize it as long as you keep publishing the source and stick to the GPL3 license. So last time I tried to make it walk along. We tried to do it statically stable. So it leans right over to take one foot off the ground, keeping the mass over the other three. It kind of works. It was very clunky though, not very dynamic. And at the end of that episode, I said there's several things we need to do to make it more dynamic. One of those is giving it a sense of balance with an inertial measurement unit so it can dynamically move its mass over the legs that are on the ground, hopefully taking two legs off the ground at a time. And the other one was that we're gonna reposture it and basically put the legs right underneath it instead of being right out. So as an easier time of balancing. But in order to do that, I really wanna redesign the feet. And at some point I wanna put pressure sensors in the feet so it can tell when its feet are on the ground. So that's the first thing we're gonna do in this episode. Don't forget to get your Open Dog t-shirts, mugs, stickers, and all those things. My merch store link is in the description below. And of course those profits come back to help make the channel better and build all these awesome projects. So the plan is to reposture the legs and the feet so the feet are closer together and therefore the gravitational effect of lifting one foot off the ground and it falling over is far less, which will make it easier to be dynamically stable. So what I want to do is pitch them right in. We could do it now, but basically these have got quite sort of um, square edges on them. So it's going to be right on the square edge. So I'm going to make ones with much smoother curves on. I also want to allow foot pressure sensors so that I can actually put something in the feet to sense when they're on the ground in the future. So we can have something that's slightly flexible that can either put a Hall effect sensor and a magnet or a force sensitive resistor in there. So I've redesigned the feet here slightly. They're a bit chunkier. They're round on a nice contour and you'll notice there is a slight uh, contour as well sloping off this way so that when I bend all the legs inwards they still actually ride on something that isn't a point. Um, these are basically going to be slightly flexible so there's slot cut in them there which means that we can measure that gap whichever posture the foot is in and that'll allow us to measure the pressure on the foot. Obviously it's going to be different if it's on the toe or the tip there as opposed to if the foot is flat down. But we'll have some idea at least if it's getting pressed or not. I've got some NinjaFlex inserts um, to have grip here which will be yellow. And these feet are going to be printed in NinjaFlex Armadillo which is pretty tough stuff I use for the bat suit so check that series out. But essentially that's really high impact plastic and we're going to print it with a Lulzbot Moore extruder so they should be pretty strong. And here they are. So we've got NinjaFlex inserts with countersunk screws holding those on. So we've got lots of nice grip there. And these are pretty tough, so they're not going to break anytime soon. And of course, they do have those slots in there. So you can see that's quite squashy. Obviously, we'll put something in there as well, which will prevent it squashing and measure the squash. So we'll probably put some foam in, maybe a full sensitive resistor that gets squashed. So um, I can feel that pressing as I just put it down. And of course, even if we put it on the ends there, that will still flex slightly more so if the foot's like that but they're likely to be a sort of like that posture most of the time so that should work pretty well so of course we've got those curves on so we've got opposite pairs that fit together so let's get those on the dog and get it repostured right i've swapped the feet over so they held on pretty well there's two bolts in the front and one in the side that holds it onto that 40 20 extrusion obviously this thing sticks out on the side which looks a bit weird as we move that foot in of course it's gonna be uh, actually standing on that piece and that piece will be facing in in line with the leg. But we need to reposture this first and I can't do it on this stand because I can't move the legs in before it puts its legs down. So we're gonna to have to stand it up normally and then use a different type of stand. So I've calibrated all the motors and now what we're gonna do is just stand it up. Off this stand and I'm going to stick a different stand underneath. So we'll get rid of the wooden frame and then I've got three ton axle stands for cars to uh, put each end so the legs don't get blocked. While I'm there though, one of the things I previously said was that the feet were too long before and now of course I've put the extra 15 millimeters in and that's why I was creaking like an old ship, especially when it pitches and rolls because uh, the maths is right but the, the robot's wrong. So we can now test those axes and see if it's any better. So I'm just gonna pitch it. Yep, that definitely doesn't creak anymore. Listen, can you hear? Oh, he's a little bit there. Now oh, that foot did move on the floor then. Maybe it's not quite so good. We probably need to check the mass for errors, but uh, generally on the whole, it feels a bit better. 
Yeah, it's a bit creaky if I do an extreme move, so we'll, we'll have to check the uh, precision of the code that I've done now. But uh, obviously all the things work. Right, good. Yeah, it's a bit creaky and I can see his feet wipe, wiping on the ground now with these feet. So, uh, yeah, it needs sorting out. Okay, let's put it up and put the new stands in anyway. Yep, so uh, I've got these things which will just fit under each end. So that should be much better. Let's just pop that there. And one there. Hopefully it'll balance on them all right. Gently do that. Get the feet off the ground. Yeah, that seems to have done it. Seems to be sitting quite happily on there. Good. Yep, so those seem to sit nicely just under the end there and um, that feels pretty stable, apart from the wobble in the stand itself. So in my code, if you remember from last time in mode one, it's manual control. So we're just taking the sticks and shoving them into the kinematic model. And you'll notice on the right, left, right stick, I've added 50 to the left side of the robot and minus 50 to the other side so that the legs move inwards and that's 50 millimeters. Um, when I've got round to the walking part, we'll do the same thing. So that is uh, permanently offset and hard coded to 50 and minus 50. But of course we'll need to adjust that as we go through the uh, gate. So if it needs to bias side to side, uh, this is pretty hacky for now, but it's just there to test it really. So it's kind of hard to see it, but hopefully you can see the feet are facing in there. Obviously I only put them in 50 millimetres. Um, and that's just put into the kinematic model, so everything else should still work just as well. Um, I think I'm going to go a bit further than that and go for 80 to 100. Because they're facing in, but not that much different to how we had them last time. So we've now got 80 millimetres um, moving in, so we want to check that's stable and it's not going to fall over sideways too easily. So I'm just going to give that a little move over this way as far as it goes and then we'll give it a shove yeah seems all right so that's pretty good obviously all the other axes still work because we've just added that 80 millimeters onto the kinematic model so yeah should be no problem really good and if i've done it right we should be to now take steps on diagonal feet and we've still got that 80 millimeter bias towards putting the feet together so um We've got no dynamic stability yet, but we're going to try it anyway and see uh, what it looks like with its new feet and the new posture. So let's go into mode two. Oh yes, wobbly. Okay, but yeah, not too bad, I guess. We might even do a little walk across the top of this board. Can't remember where I left the code. Oh, there we go. Yep, definitely needs some more stability though. But what do we mean by a sense of stability? Well, it's easy enough to put an inertial measurement unit in the robot so we can measure if it's tipping sideways or it's tipping front to back. Check out my Blinky Ball video where I put an inertial measurement in an LED ball and it responds to motion in three rotary axis. I've also got the setup of an inertial measurement unit in there, which is quite useful information. But obviously what happens when we've got a robot this size that's heavy and it's trying to move and walk and move in uh, multiple translation axes as well, then lots of other things happen and some of those things are unexpected. You can check out the Robot X series for the trials and tribulations of trying to get that thing to balance. And in the end, it didn't do too much of a bad job, but some unpredictable things happen. So with this robot, to start with, we're just gonna try and take diagonal feet off the ground and keep it in one place and stop it falling over either way by trying to move its mass, you'd think at least, onto the uh, diagonal center of gravity for the two feet that are on the ground. But once we start moving forward, of course, that becomes a bit more tricky because of course it's gonna fall onto the foot that's off the ground. And if we move over this way and then we try and put that foot on the ground, the force of putting that foot down might tip it over even further. And this is one of the things we found with Robot X. So it may be, in fact, that as we take a leg off the ground, we wanna actually push the mass towards it so that it's ready to fall onto that foot as it comes down. This one's got four legs and of course with those diagonal feet on the ground, it might do something else. So there's gonna be a bit of trial and error. But first of all, we need to put an inertial measurement unit in and get the data. Yep, so don't forget to check out the Blinky Ball video to find out more about setting up an inertial measurement unit, including the zero calibration. This is an MPU 6050, and that video's in my channel quite recently. So yeah, what we're using again is the MPU 6050 on a nice card to go into the dog. 
with an Arduino Pro Mini. So this uses interrupts, this Arduino reads it using interrupts, it then sends off the serial data to the rest of the dog, and that means we don't have to run interrupts on the master Arduino so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the code. This is similar to the way I did the IMU in some of the BB-8 and BB-9E builds as well. So I fitted the IMU in there, I actually put this bar on the bottom because I didn't recess this quite as much as I thought I had. You can see a little light flashing there which is every cycle of reading the IMU on the Arduino and the wires go round there to a serial in on the main Arduino Mega. So I've just used another easy transfer statement here to bring that data in from the IMU Arduino and we're just chucking that out to the serial port. All of this is Bill Porter's easy transfer library as per the other data transfers. So uh, that's the IMU stuff there, so we've got pitch and roll. So if I were to go and roll the robot, we should see the second value changing there, and that's in degrees. And if I were to go and lift it, let's just grab one end of it and try and lift it up to do pitch, we should see the first value changing there. So I've just made two PID controllers here called PID1 and PID2, and um, those are basically going to take the values from the pitch and roll. So I've got a roll, uh, an offset of roll of one there, so I just added one degree to it and that's experimental because it was veering to one side slightly. Obviously the input of our pitch controller is the IMU, the set point is zero because we want it to stay balanced. We could dynamically change that if we wanted or change it from a stick and I've done a PID computer each one. I've experimented with turning them round, timesing them by minus one to make the response the opposite way round and I'm going to show you some video in a minute of uh, the effects of that and trying to tune them up. But essentially what I've done is assign the roll, so uh, here when the robot has one set of legs on the ground, the roll operates the pitch controller one way, and when it's the other set of legs it operates the other way, so basically balances towards the front leg that's on the ground, and the other one is just front to back whatever's happening to try and keep it on balance for the pitch. So I've programmed the step sequencer to take the feet diagonally off the ground for about four seconds each, and then we can see what the response is of that pitch controller, and how well it can balance ultimately, and I've done that so we get time to see what the response is. Obviously it'll be much quicker when it's in motion. So let's, uh, I'm going to hang on to that because I know it doesn't work very well, but let's see what it does. So, we should be able to see these actuators trying to keep it sort of above its centre of gravity. Whoops, there we go, sort of trying. So it's a bit crazy, but ultimately the uh, IMU is working there from four to back tip to try and bias the sideways translation. I've now brought in that other pitch controller for the front to back axis using the pitch of the IMU. I've just shortened the step length and um, speeded it up a bit to see what happens. There's still a few issues where it tends to fall to the left quite a bit. So um, I need to just manually adjust the controls that I've now written in to try and bias it the other way. But we're kind of getting there. It's uh, looking a bit believable now, so let's just try that again. I just have to be careful with this controller. And as you'll see, it always falls this way. So I'm just going to bias it the other way a little bit. Maybe back a little bit. And just try and manually balance it as it's going. But sometimes I can get it to take its feet off. I just need to tune those PID controllers as well. So I've tuned that PID controller a bit and the timers in the step timer that make the legs move at particular times and how long they stay up before they go down. I've also, most importantly, tuned down that first order filter. Check out episode two, that's the motion smoothing filter. And the value's hard coded, really I should change that on the fly depending on what it's doing. Basically it was set to 50 and I've turned it down to 10. And that makes the movements much sharper. There's no deceleration, so even though the motors aren't going any faster, over their whole travel they do in fact get there quicker. So now the motions are a lot sharper. I've tuned up that PID controller as well to make it a bit sharper, a bit more D. And uh, now it's not too bad, it's not perfect, but we're getting there. And it's a, bit, a lot more believable in fact, so let's see what it does now. Yep, sometimes even consistent. There's a bit of a hiccup, which I think was the buffer overflow. It seems to be turning on the spot quite a bit. But we're definitely getting there. It's stamping on the floor a lot. Yeah, those foot pressure sensors definitely squash all the way down. You can see they squash slightly less as I roll onto the front of them. But if we were to put a full sensitive resistor in there, we'd definitely know if the foot is on the ground or not. I'm hoping you can see it, that this foot now 
you'll notice is quite a lot further forward than this one. Uh, not much, about an inch, I guess, or maybe maybe a bit over. And I think that's because of belt slippage on the legs or somewhere in this uh, mechanism. Those 3D printed pulleys again have slipped on the um, smooth shaft, so I really do need to upgrade those to metal. I'm pretty happy with the speed everything goes. So I'll probably just do a straight swap. Yeah, the front legs seem all right. There may be a slight difference, but uh, it's not too bad for all of that high speed pounding into the ground. Yeah, there was a snapping sound in one of those clips and on further testing, uh, the whole thing fell over and actually a piece of it's broken. Yep, it's one of my 3D printed knee joints. Look at that, it's gone clean through. So um, I'm gonna reprint that. The others look all right, um, but we'll just do that for now and carry on. Perhaps that's a piece that should be upgraded to metal. So I printed the replacement with the Moore Struder so it's nice and tough, but actually on closer inspection looking at the original, I noticed that those T-nuts didn't actually turn round properly to uh, grip the slot. So they should turn around to be the other way. So the others went in properly and that's why this is just snapped and pulled off and I couldn't see them because I couldn't look in the end because of this. So we'll just have to be careful with that one that all the nuts are done up properly. So this is me trying to tune those pit controllers up. So basically I'm lifting diagonal feet off the ground for around four seconds each. I've turned down the motion smoothing filter in this mode to almost nothing. So then the pit controller can control the motors um, as it expects to rather than them being smoothed out afterwards. So um, we're trying to balance there by using those two pit controllers to affect various axis, mainly the translation axis and also the pitch and roll axis. Uh, to try and use those in some sort of unison to try and keep it on balance. It's actually very difficult to do. It only needs to do it for probably 300 milliseconds while it lifts up each foot, uh, but that's the basic principle. So, of course, it will actually walk faster than that, so I decided to speed up the time it has where its feet are off the ground and uh, gave it quite a lot of time to settle around a second in between taking the next step and uh, that seems relatively successful, so it looks actually pretty stable. And you can see the other motors adjusting on the legs and underneath, even though actually they're not part of the leg lifting on those two legs, and all it's doing is lifting those legs in Z. But nonetheless, it seems to stabilize, and uh, you can see it kind of adjusting and compensating and settling in between the steps. So then I've gone faster still, so we've decreased the length of time in between the steps, However, at some point it loses the plot completely and it tips and can't recover either to the front or to the back and then it becomes a wobbly mess. So I decided to add in some of that filtering again to make it move more smoothly so it's not smashing its feet into the ground when it puts them down and tipping it over and uh, that seemed to fix it. It's still a bit wobbly but it is actually taking its feet off the ground. You can see those foot pressure sensors are going to work there. and. Um, that's not too bad, but it might be, even though it's not perfect at all, kind of the best we might get out of it with the microcontroller and IMU infrastructure. So it's not totally amazing, but it is dynamically stable. It is using that inertial measurement unit to affect at least four of the axis that I normally manually control, the pitch roll and the two translation axis to try and stay on balance on diagonal feet. I could probably make it better if I had foot pressure sensors, so if it did come down unevenly, it didn't get too upset, and it could actually sense that one foot had hit the ground before the other and kind of mould to the ground. Of course, this is a harder problem to solve than Robot X, which only had two legs, even though I've got two legs on the ground at a time with a dog, and Robot X, of course, only had one, it did have quite big square flat feet, so finding that balancing point dynamically was a lot easier. They were quite big, check out those videos. Um, we could do more dynamic stability on this to make it mould to the ground just using the inertial measurement unit, and I did do that in Robot X as well, and it worked pretty well but I think we're pretty limited by the microcontroller we've got in here and the speed of all those serial buses. So yes, we've still got three Arduino Mega 2650s running at only 8-bit at 16 megahertz trying to control the whole thing. And now we've got that additional Arduino Pro Mini, which is also 8-bit and 16 megahertz. And that's reading the IMU. It's only doing it 20 times a second. And it's basically sending data over a 56 kiloboard serial link to the first Arduino that's then writing to the other two, either 115k or 56k, I can't remember. And those two are then writing to the 6O drives on serial as well, 115k. And two of them are software serial. So I'm pretty sure by the time we've sensed the data there, to make really fast motions and to compensate quickly, we just don't have enough speed. There's so much lag on all this serial to serial to serial. There's four serial hops there. Um, so that might 
sort of contribute for why it goes wrong when it's going fast. So what could we do now to make it better? Well, there's probably quite a few people shouting at the screen now saying, why did you do it that way? And you should be, unless you haven't been paying attention. Of course, what I've got is motion filtering on all the actuator lengths happening on those slave Arduinos doing the writes to the O drives to control the positions, which makes it lovely and smooth when I do the kinematic demo and everything looks very organic. But of course that smooths out the compensation, as I said as well, um, if I remove that motion smoothing, then the joints are really much quicker and everything's good, but then they smash into the ground and that causes it to tip around, as well as the inertia of those eight kilogram legs moving, causing it to tip in the op opposite direction, like a reaction wheel or something. So ideally what I would do is only smooth the requested X, Y, and Z moves, and then apply the compensation with the inertial measurement unit and the PID controllers after that. So the motions are smooth, but the compensation is quick. So I could do that, it would involve quite a lot of code changes between all those three Arduinos. I'm not gonna do it for now, I think we really need a microcontroller upgrade, and I'm not just gonna make tons of episodes like this where it kind of works, but it doesn't really work, and I try another piece of code and I try changing some values over. What I really wanna do next is some upgrades. We also need to do some metal upgrades for some of the parts, because I keep finding nuts and bolts and screws loose that are holding some of the plastic parts on because of the creep in the PLA. We also need to upgrade the encoder holders. I don't think they're slipping. If the encoder slips against the motor stator position, then the O-Drive can't drive the motor properly so it loses power. But definitely those 3D printed pulleys on the motors and the ball screws are slipping. So I have to keep stopping and recalibrating it so that I can tune it, which is quite frustrating because the legs change length and things change position. And the faster I move the motors, the worse it gets. So there's quite a few things we need to do there. I am, however, happy with the motor speed. So this is some footage of it working with no filter, the filter set to zero, and I'm just thrashing it around there. So you can see it's quite jerky and everything, but the joints are pretty quick. It will actually jump and lift at least one foot off the ground if I try it, but I'm too scared because obviously there's nothing squashy in them to bring it down apart from those feet. But you know, it will move in an agile way, but I think the code we need is gonna be a lot different to that step sequencer, just sort of with eight steps trying to plan the feet and move them to positions. So we're gonna need something that can actually move the body forward consistently as it walks and move the feet underneath and try and keep that body at a consistent speed. And that's quite hard when you're going from one step to the next. And I think I really need something much faster in terms of microcontroller with more programming space to try and program that in. It did strike me, of course, that if all is lost and we, I'm not good enough at coding to make this balance properly and move in motion, we could, of course, put an ankle joint on that foot because at the moment it's a piece of 4020 extrusion with the foot on and we could actually have little short feet that makes that balancing point bigger and then I think that will work much better. It'll be harder to walk on uneven terrain though. That's of course much better with single point feet or at least big ball feet or something like that because when they're on the ground, they're on the ground instead of being partly on the ground or partly off a step. So also of course in the comments, several people have pointed out that why hasn't it got compliant regions? It hasn't got shock absorbers. Obviously half this issue of smashing the feet into the ground would be better if it had soft joints that could absorb the load. But of course doing it this way, this is really a, a robot that's built like a traditional robot where it's rigid and we do a mathematical calculation that's inverse kinematic. We can place the feet in X, Y, Z and it's rigid. So when we do that, we know that they're definitely there. If we had squashy zones, or for instance, the studding and the rose joints that make those push rods, say they were shock absorbers, then of course it wouldn't be predictable. We wouldn't really be able to, we wouldn't know what's going on at all. In fact, it could be get quite wobbly if it's moving at speed. So we'd have to measure that length and then put that back into the kinematic model where instead of that being a define variable where it's fixed, that becomes a variable that reads from an analog in that measures the distance or something. Then we need a much, much faster processor to try and compensate that and actually build that mathematical model so it can compensate quick enough for the change that's happening in real time. So it's like a feedback loop going round and round and round. I think we probably need to run a thousand cycles a second, something like that, in order for it to be fast enough. Now the Boston Dynamics robots do of course have compliant joints, but I don't think they work in quite the same way. I think they work in a sort of force forward feedback method where they smash one foot into the ground, it's compliant, and then they measure the joints and work out where the foot is, and then they can apply force to that joint by applying more motor torque and then measuring the distance between where the motor is and where the compliant piece is, which is probably attached directly to it, to then work out what the positions are and compensate for the rest of the model. So it's a completely different build, basically. I'd have to basically restructure all of the actuators to do that, 
without having a ridiculously fast processor and causing myself a lot of other problems. Is however something I'd like to investigate in the future, perhaps in a smaller robot that's specifically built for jumping. It'll probably be called Open Jumpy. So that's something I'm thinking about at the moment, or at least doing tests with one leg. But as it goes, Open Dog is gonna remain rigid um, as far as I know at the moment and be that sort of traditional view on robotics where everything's run in a mathematical model, is rigid and we know where the joints are. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on OpenDog. It's gonna be going on well into late 2019 and beyond, I'd have thought at the rate we're doing at the moment. And of course, I'll be showing all of the development stages, the upgrades and everything as we go. And you can see the trial and error and all of that good stuff. You can support me on Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early. So don't forget to check that out. And that's, of course, how most of these projects are funded. You can also get Open Dog t-shirts and various other designs and mugs and stickers from my merch store. The link's in the description below. All right, that's all for now.